Hello, I'm Marcello Rolando, the Reasonable Voice, thanking you for becoming one of the reasonable voices heard round the world. Cuba and Iran, Da Vinci and Finch, Rees and Omar. I'm too young to remember CIA Director Alan Dulles and his brother Secretary of State John Foster Dulles, nor CIA's first successful coup in 1953, which replaced a democratically elected government with our Shah of Iran. I do remember, however, our American embassy breached, 52 American citizens taken hostage for 444 days, Tehran embassy Brits rescuing several Americans, unlike Ben Affleck's cinematic fantasy, Carter's helicopter dust storm, Reagan's opting for his political fiction over reality of freed American hostages. I remember when Russia was the Soviet Union in a face-off for the globe, eyeball to eyeball with America, over an island called Cuba. I remember Cuban missiles for Turkey missiles, a fallen Nikita Khrushchev and assassinated John Kennedy. I trust all will remember corporate war profiteering, too big to fail, Cheney's so, and Netanyahu each a bad mistake of historical proportion, and hold individuals accountable. Remember Pope Francis speaking climatic truth to corporatism's global warming power? And a president in his sixth White House year earning Nobel Prize while redefining lame duck. Remember readers from American Protestants to Sistine Chapel read United Against Da Vinci Code because Mary Madeline might have lovingly attended the Last Supper. Now fans forsake Harper Lee for doing what we all hoped one day she would, produce another book. I, for one, would love a descendant of Jesus on earth, especially if I could but touch the hem of that garment. We all know products of their conservative Republican environment who, during life's journey, put away childish things, becoming people favoring equality and justice for all. Is it not possible in To Kill a Mockingbird, a prequel for the author, Go Set a Watchman, we see into a man's evolution? Perhaps Atticus was appointed because, despite being a bigot, he believed the law is the law. Or just maybe Gregory Peck portrayed a fictional character and Dan Brown writes novels, not dogma. Remember wishing the West Wing could be something akin to Aaron Sorkin's creation? Remember how sensitively West Wing weaved the 2005 death of Chief of Staff John Spencer into the fictional Bartlett administration storyline? As for the distinguished actor Roger Rees, I remember every West Wing scene in which he appeared. He and Martin Sheen demonstrated the contrast between our White House and their West Wing. Is being Lawrence of Arabia on your bucket list, or being a funny grandmother Golda Meir tutoring us in the folly of war? Or do you prefer, as I did, to be Nicky Arnstein in Funny Girl? On and off camera, life in the wings or audience chooses fiction over reality, but we need to know the difference. For one brief shining moment, at breakneck speed on horseback, I rescued an asthmatic damsel in distress, but I'm not Zorro. Relocating to New York City in 1978, ten years after Dr. Zhivago's release, tourists repeatedly asked me for Omar Sharif's autograph. I didn't stop attempting to explain I wasn't the Egyptian-looking Russian physician until 1980, when trying to cash an out-of-state check, a bank manager's approval was necessary. The petite bank manager, in her sixties, entered from her office, quietly listened to my story, and then initialing my check calmly commented, Anyone who looks as much like Omar Sharif as you do deserves whatever he wants. I realized then some will always prefer the fantasy. Sometime later I was cast as Martinez in an Erie Productions updated crime version of Little Women, shot in Florida and New York City for Italian TV. When I met the director, John Carlo, he said I looked too much like the star to be in scenes with him. As Martinez, I played the brutal enforcer for, you guessed it, Omar Sharif. Years later, while watching Zhivago at home, I caught a peripheral glimpse of me in the mirror. 
there we were, united as one in mirrored reality and movie fiction. I've missed him since the Tamarind Seed. But if ever there was a man who knew life's entangled comedies and tragedies are often reflected in our fantasies, it was Omar Sharif. Those who manage to distinguish between fiction and truth ultimately enjoy the peace that passes all understanding. Farewell, Omar. Peace be with you. Join us. Become one of the reasonable voices heard round the world. Thank you.